Hey guys, today we're going to be taking a look at finding the derivative of a function based off of a chart with given values for the function that you're looking at and the function that you're looking at derivatives. Some important skills that you're going to definitely need to know before moving into this. If I have a function h of x that's split up by plus and minus signs, I can take the derivative of each of those individually to find the derivative of h prime. So in this case, I could just take the derivative of f and or the derivative of g to find the derivative of h. The next thing we're going to need to remember is how to take the derivative of a product of functions. So say h of x is equal to f times g. In that case, h prime is going to be found using the product rule. So that says first derivative of the second, so fg prime, plus second derivative of the first, so g f prime. We also need to remember if I have a function h of x that can be written as a quotient of functions, f of x over g of x, then I can apply the quotient rule to find the derivative of h. So that would be low d high, g f prime, minus high d low, f g prime, all over low squared, so g of x squared. Another thing we need to remember is if h of x is written as a composition of functions, so say h is equal to f of g of x, that's when I would apply the chain rule, which says derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, so f prime of g of x, times the derivative of the inside, so times g prime of x. The last very basic thing you need to remember, if I have h of x is equal to some constant c, then h prime or the derivative of a constant is equal to just plain old zero. Let's look at a couple of examples where I'm going to have to apply these rules and use some derivative charts to actually find the values of h prime of 2 or h prime of 3 or whatever it is that they're asking me for. Use the following table to evaluate each derivative. So I have a table up here and I have values of f, g, f prime, and g prime at different values of x. So x equals 1, x equals 2, and x equals 3. This first example says find the derivative of f of x times g of x at x is equal to 2. So first, I need to find the derivative of what's in the parentheses here. Since this says f of x times g of x, when I find the derivative here, I'm applying the product rule. So that's first derivative of the second, f g prime, plus the second times the derivative of the first, so g f prime. From here, since I want this derivative at x equals 2, I'm going to plug 2 in for x's everywhere. So f of 2, g prime of 2, plus g of 2, f prime of 2. From here, I'm just going to find the values of each of these from the table that they gave me. So first, I'm looking for f of 2. So f of 2, that's equal to 3. g prime of 2, g prime of 2, that's equal to 4. g of 2 is equal to 3. And f prime of 2 is also equal to 3. Now I just need to multiply out and add, and I end up with 21 for this derivative at x equals 2. Number 2. The derivative of g of x over f of x at x is equal to 1. So since this is a quotient of functions, I have to apply the quotient rule here. So that's low d high f g prime minus high d low g f prime all over low squared. You'll see a function squared written in two ways. You'll see it written like this where it says f squared x. Or you might also see this written as f of x whole thing in brackets squared. Both notations mean the same thing. It means find the value of f of x and then square that value. So since I'm looking for these at x is equal to 1, I'm going to find f of 1, g prime of 1, etc. I'm plugging in 1 for x everywhere. So for f of 1, I get 2. g prime of 1 is also 2. g of 1 is 5. f prime of 1 is 1. And then f of 1 is 2, and I'm squaring that, so 2 squared. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 5 over 4, so I end up with negative 1 fourth for number 2. Number 3, h of x is equal to 2f of x minus 3g of x plus 5. Find h prime of 2. The first thing I need to do here is find h prime of x. So when I see 2f of x here, I read this as 2 times f of x, so yes, I would need to use a product rule, but watch what happens when I take the product of a constant times a function. I would end up with 2f prime x 
plus f of x times the derivative of 2 is 0. So this whole second term would knock out, and I end up with just the constant times the derivative. So that's a rule that you can always apply. If I have a constant times a function, I can keep the constant and take the derivative of the function. I don't need to worry about doing the product rule. So I can apply that same idea to the minus 3g of x. Instead of doing a product rule, I can just write minus 3g prime of x plus the derivative of 5 is 0. So now in order to find h prime of 2, I'm looking for 2 f prime of 2. So f prime of 2 was 3 minus 3 g prime of 2 is 4. I don't need to write the plus 0. I end up with 6 minus 12, so my answer here is negative 6. Number 4, p of x is equal to f of g of x. Find p prime of 2. So I can see here that this is a composition of functions. I'm going to need to apply the chain rule when I find p prime. Chain rule says derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone. So f prime of g times the derivative of the inside, so that would be g prime of x. If I plug a 2 in for x everywhere, I end up with f prime of g of 2 times g prime of 2. When I see something like this, I work from the inside out. First thing that I actually need to find is g of 2. When I look for g of 2 up here, I get 3. So this now becomes f prime of 3 times g prime of 2. I go back to my chart. f prime of 3 is 5 and g prime of 2 is 4. So my answer here is 20. Number 5. h of x is equal to g squared of x find h prime of 3. I'm first going to rewrite h of x here. So although this says g squared, this means g of x squared. When I see it like this, I can see that I'm going to need to apply a chain rule here where g of x is the inside and then the something squared is the outside. So in order to find h prime, I'm going to bring that exponent to the front. So that's 2. Leave the inside alone drop the exponent by 1. So now that just becomes to the first power times the derivative of the inside, g prime. So again, this was just a chain rule. Derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. So now in order to find h prime of 3, I'm looking for 2 times g of 3 times g prime of 3. g of 3 from my table is 1. g prime of 3 from my table is 6. I end up with 12 as my answer for number 5. Last one, number 6. Find the derivative of 1 over f cubed of x at x is equal to 1. So this is my original function, and I'm going to rewrite this original thing before I start taking a derivative. I'm actually going to write this as f to the negative 3 of x, which means that I can also look at this as f of x to the negative 3. The reason I brought this up and made this exponent negative is so that I don't have to use the quotient rule. The way this is written, I would need to use a quotient rule, and then while I was using the quotient rule, I would need to use a chain rule when taking the derivative of the denominator. So in order to avoid that, I can just bring this denominator to the numerator by making that exponent negative. From here, when I apply the chain rule, the f of x is going to be my inside, and this something to the negative 3 is the outside. So when I take a derivative, I'm going to bring the negative 3 to the front, leave the f of x alone, drop that exponent by 1. Negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4 times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of f of x is f prime x. I can rewrite this by making this negative exponent positive. So the negative 3 stays in the numerator. The f prime x stays in the numerator. But this f of x to the negative fourth can go into the denominator and become f of x to the positive 4. From here, since I'm looking for this derivative at x equals 1, I'm going to plug a 1 in for x. So I have negative 3 f prime of 1 over f of 1 to the 4th power. So that's going to be negative 3 times, okay, f prime of 1 is just 1, and then f of 1 is 2. So I have negative 3 over 2 to the 4th, which is 16. So negative 3 over 16 is my answer for number 6. That's it for finding derivatives, giving charts and tables. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Have a great day.